Many times, customers have asked my colleagues in sales and product management about how to check the health of lightning arrester before installation or how to assess the health of the ones installed at the site. All governing standards of the lightning arrester defines routine tests for the product which are done by every manufacturer for 100% parts before dispatch. But if a customer wants to verify the same product before installation, then it becomes challenging. This is due to the fact that not all routine tests can be done at the site. Hello, my name is Shatadal Das. This video is the first of the three series video created for routine maintenance and condition monitoring of lightning arrester. So please watch all the three videos. But before proceeding further, please like my video and subscribe to my channel Search Pulse. Moving ahead, we can find some common routine tests recommended by major governing standards like reference voltage test tested either with AC or DC power source or both, leakage current test, residual voltage test or discharge voltage test, seal test and the partial discharge test. Now, Reference voltage test is performed to ascertain the rating of the product. Leakage current test is performed to ascertain the health of the product. Residual voltage test is performed to ascertain the protective margin of the product with respect to BIL. Seal test, although applicable for lightning arrestor with enclosed gas volume, is performed to ascertain how protected are the internal assembly from the risk of moisture ingress. Finally, partial discharge test which is performed to identify if there is any problem in the assembly of the product. The problem which starts as a periodic partial breakdown of insulation and if ignored, the same problem has a likeness of complete breakdown of insulation. For assessing the health of an arrestor, not all the above mentioned tests can be performed at the site without compromising on the recommended procedure as per the standard. But of those tests, it is quite likely to perform the leakage current test. Looking at the need of the grid operators and electrical utilities, a procedure for condition monitoring at the site, National Electrical Testing Association or NETA published Acceptance Testing Specifications or ATS for electrical power equipments. As per NETA or NETA, acceptance testing or the field test recommended for lightning arresters are visual and mechanical inspections. There are electrical tests like resistance measurement of voltage joints, insulation resistance between phase and ground terminal, grounding connection resistance measurement and watt loss measurement of arrestor. Visual inspection is very much operator skill dependent and requires expertise to find a problem in the product before installation. Resistance measurement is indeed required to check the tightness of the high voltage or the earth connections. Insulation resistance measurement is a non-destructive test to check the insulation strength but on a lighter note, it can't distinguish if the supplied product is an arrestor or insulator. Grounding check is critical for proper protection of arrestor. Finally, watt loss measurement, which is the most important test that should be done to verify the health of the arrestor. Watt loss measurement or leakage current measurement, either any one of the test is useful and can easily detect problems within lightning arrestor. This can be measured by connecting lightning arrestor to the high voltage line and using leakage current measurement device to find the value. This value then can be compared against the leakage current value provided by the manufacturer. For routine maintenance check, site engineers are advised to keep a log of leakage current measured for the lightning arrestor and analyze the trend to verify if the health of the lightning arrestor has deteriorated or not. This data of leakage current measurement can also be used along with the data of the surge events faced by the lightning arrestor. Apart from that, I would consider PD measurement at site. Although the results will not be the way many end users will be expecting due to the fact that there are many sources of electrical noise at site which can be picked up by the PD meter, but at least it can indicate the source of PD. 
There are portable PD detection devices from Doble, Omicron, HVPD and Highvolt to be named a few. Here, I would like to make it very clear that TAN Delta is not a diagnostic technique for lightning arrester, but it is only required for products like cables and CVTs. This is due to the fact that TAN Delta test is performed to verify if there is any kind of impurity or defect in a pure capacitive element and that is done by checking the loss angle or TAN Delta. Lightning arrester is not a capacitive product. It is a non-linear resistor, not a capacitor. Many people get confused and ask for TAN Delta measurement in lightning arrester because there is a capacitive current. This is wrong understanding within many people that TAN Delta measurement is recommended for surge arresters or lightning arresters to verify its healthiness. With this, I conclude my first video of the series. Don't forget to watch the other two videos. Thank you.